Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers, and I'm calling in from my home office here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I am joined by our presenter, Tilo Swartz, who is joining us from near Stuttgart, Germany. So let me turn now to our presenter, Tilo Swartz. Tilo is a management trainer, personal coach, and keynote speaker. He supports organizations and managers to successfully lead change and continuous improvement. Uh, he developed much of his experience in navigating a crisis like we're facing today while working as plant manager with Festuel uh, during the 2008 global financial meltdown. And on a personal note, uh, let me add that Tilo has been a regular part of an event that Lean Frontiers runs called uh, the Kata Summit, or you may have heard it uh, referred to as KataCon, and has developed his own popular training program called the Kata Dojo. It is safe to say that Tilo is certainly one of the most experienced Kata practitioners on the planet, and it really is an honor, uh, Tilo, to have you with us here today. So for now, Tilo, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, you. everybody. Hello, 21st century leaders and, and coaches. So in the current crisis, we are really facing unknown challenges all over the globe. And um, I believe that this is especially challenging our leadership because good leadership shows in crisis. And our partners, teams, and even our communities need us as leaders and coaches right now. So I think there's a reason why we're meeting and taking time for this webinar today. And I think it's because we all want to be at our best as leaders and coaches in this crisis. So at the end of this webinar today, you will have five powerful starter kata you can put into practice immediately, uh, especially to confidently and successfully lead your team in crisis. So what do we have to do to live up to our role of leaders and coaches? Well, I think that we especially have to resist the temptation to react tactically. Instead, we should stay calm and apply and foster a scientific way of thinking. And we can do so by practicing the following four steps you might know. Step one, determine the direction. Even if that seems a bit hard right now. Step two, grasp the current condition. So the facts, the reality on the ground. Step three, establish short-term next target conditions. And step four, go quickly by experimenting towards these next target conditions. So in this webinar, I'm going to show you how you and your team can successfully and confidently navigate the unknown territory ahead. And with these four simple yet powerful steps called the improvement kata can make your way out of the crisis. You might wonder, why should I start this right now? Well, We've been talking about the world becoming more volatile, more unpredictable for years now. And we've, we understand that we have to become more adaptive, agile, innovative. So in my view, now it's here. And the current crisis is not a one-time exception, but more an extreme expression of the already existing trend we have that our world is becoming more and more complex and unpredictable. So what is important in such conditions or what are the skills we need? Well, in our complex and dynamic world today, and even more so I believe in the future, adaptivity, creativity, speed and implementation, and above all, collaboration in teams are crucial for success. Therefore, I believe we need proactive and self-reliant teams with the ability to navigate unknown territory and unlock new knowledge, and all this at high speed. Or to put it in other words, we could say the ability to quickly develop new knowledge and find innovative solutions to 
oncoming new problems and challenges is a core competence for the 21st century. And I believe the best way we currently have to do so might be a scientific step-by-step -step approach. So scientific in that sense means exploring new territory step-by-step, -step, purposefully testing our ideas and in return adjust based on what we discover. I think that's how we can master the challenges ahead and achieve a competitive advantage in the long run. So then why should we start it now? Well, if we practice and establish a scientific step-by-step -step approach in our organization right now, we can win twofold. First of all, we can master the current crisis. And secondly, we develop in our teams, in our organizations, the creativity and the adaptiveness that is necessary anyways for the complex world of the 21st century. And I think that in that, if we do so, that is responsible and foresightful leadership. So then why is this training called CADA in crisis? And what is a CADA? Well, a CADA is the Japanese word for training routine. Or in other words, a CADA is a structured routine you practice to learn a new approach, something new, until the underlying pattern of the CADA becomes a habit, a natural and intuitive way of doing something. That's what we're aiming for. By the way, we know this approach from many areas, sports, for example, dancing, or even learning a new piece of music. So then, but why do we need a kata to learn how to navigate unknown territory and master the challenges of the 21st century? Well, what I think is this, when we are confronted with something new and unknown, just like in this crisis now, our brain makes assumptions about what the future will look like. And we then decide and act accordingly. And recent brain research shows that we're not as rational and logic in doing so as we might believe. Because most of our daily life is controlled by habits and assumptions, which above all, we're unaware of. So this is why I think we, it would be helpful to have a four-step navigating pattern, which, by the way, we call the improvement kata, to navigate through unknown territory and avoid these traps. Uh, by the way, if you want to find out more about the background of uh, the improvement kata, uh, you could look it up in the Toyota Kata Practice Guide by Mike Rother. So let's come back to these assumptions we make. In his famous book, Thinking Fast and Slow, Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman describes a multitude of brain biases we fall victim to. So what does this mean? Well, whenever we are confronted with something new, we have to kind of predict what will happen. So our brain makes assumptions so we can decide and act. And right then, although we think we're rational and logic, we're not as fragile and, and logic as we might believe. So let me pick out just four brain biases I think are very important in the current situation. So first, there's the confirmation bias. You could call this kind of the father of all brain biases. And it, this, it describes our tendency to interpret a new situation in a way that it fits and confirms our existing beliefs and experiences. So while that is a great approach for many situations as it allows us to react fast, it becomes a real obstacle if we're in volatile and changing conditions because habits and experience pull us back to what we've always been doing. Or in other words, when we are confronted with new tasks, challenges or problems, we tackle them usually with old and therefore sometimes inappropriate solutions. So hence the saying, for a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. The second bias strongly as play is the overconfidence bias. And you could call that kind of the grandfather of all biases, maybe especially for us men. So let me explain. When confronted with something new and over 
the, the confirmation bias strikes and we come up with a solution, uh, we not only favor our existing beliefs, but on top are 200% confident that we are right and know exactly what to do with this problem. Let's move on to make things even a bit worse. Two more biases, which are, I think, especially at play right now. One of them is the social proof bias. So if we are unsure what to do, we tend to do what we see others do. So that's why we probably right now buy more toilet paper than we need, despite knowing rationally that it doesn't make any sense. An extra package can't be wrong, we think, if everybody's doing it, better safe than sorry. So that's social proof bias at its best. And then the fourth one, that's my favorite one, and that's called the action bias. And the action bias pushes us to jump into action if we, even if we don't know if the action makes sense. So we, we think like better to do anything than nothing, and, and this kind of bias, very interestingly, was uh, discovered by a nice research done by Bar Eli, an Israeli researcher, and he analyzed penalty shots in soccer and goalies' reaction to it. His finding? Well, statistically, penalty shots are evenly, about evenly distributed to the left corner of the goal, the center, and the right side. So about 30-30-30. So for a goalie, statistically, it would be best to stay in the middle because chances are the highest if the ball is shot to the middle that you catch the ball. So then what do goalies do? Well, in nearly 50% of the cases, they jump to the left and in nearly other 50% of the cases, they jump to the right and they hardly stay in the middle. Statistically, that doesn't really make sense. So why do they act that way? Well, imagine for a second, looking at that picture now, that you are the goalie and standing in the middle of the goal and the penalty is shot. And statistically, you know it's best to stay in the middle. So you stay in the middle and the ball hits on the left side. And you kind of sheepishly look behind it. 60,000 people in the stadium burst out into a roar. See that dumb goalie? Didn't he move? In contrast, if you, instead of staying in the middle, would powerfully dive into the right corner, even if it's wrong, people will say, what a dive, great goalie, you can't be right every time. And that is exactly what happens to us in a crisis situation. So we jump into action, frantically, just to do something, and on top we copy what we see others doing. Hardly any rational thinking involved, you could say. So. This pattern of four simple steps called the improvement cataract can help us escape the trap by practicing a scientific way of thinking and step-by-step -step acting. And I believe really now is the perfect time to apply it or start it if you haven't practiced it. And it will not only help us to navigate out of the crisis, but over time build new habits, habits that are needed to navigate new and unknown territory and master the challenges of the 21st century. However, if we try to learn a new approach, that doesn't happen in a leapfrog way. Recent research on learning and habit building shows that it's best to start small, actually very small, and then step by step, build your new approach, build your new habit. And that is what we call Stardacata, or what Stardacatas are for. Deliberate steps or micro habits, you could say, for getting a new approach or behavior started. So in the next 15 minutes, we will go through these four steps you see here of the improvement kata, adapt them to the current crisis situation. And I would like to discuss specific Stardacata for each of these four steps you can put into practice immediately. So let's start, let's get started by determine the direction. So having a quick look on how we determine direction generally, we usually approach in, in companies, we approach it like this. Uh, companies aim for a longer term vision. Where do we want to be long term? What 
competitive advantage do we want to establish? From that, we break down challenges, we say, maybe three quarterly to 12 month yearly strategic targets. From that, we go to current condition, compare, and based on our observation, define the next target condition, maybe two to six weeks ahead. And then we can start conducting experiments to go step by step towards our target condition. However, this approach might seem difficult right now because the direction might be unclear when so much certainty, uncertainty is in play and even chaos. Existing strategic plans seem inadequate. Is it still the right strategy to follow? Budget plans, target 2020, maybe way off track. So it's, it's quite easy to understand that people are unsure about what to do. And the question that arises, what should we do? A situation like this, and I've seen that over and over, drives many managers and teams into reacting frantically with no direction at all. And that's not a good way to lead our team. So let's quickly discuss how could we determine a direction in the face of crisis? And I think the first, the first thing we need to do is to shorten the time frame, because this reminds me of a situation of a ship and its crew in a raging storm. They will still keep their destination in mind. However, they might have to deviate from the ideal course due to the storm, but they will do that purposefully. And they might even, until the storm calms down, go with the wind and purposefully align with the waves, of course, to prevent capsizing. So I'm not saying stay on course come, come what may, but letting the boat spin arbitrarily in a storm is about the worst thing you can do. So let's come back to determining direction in a crisis. How can we do that? Well, first and foremost, we have to reduce the timeframes for our challenge and target conditions. So with your team, ask, what is our challenge right now? Where, what do we need to achieve in about the next, let's say, four to six weeks? And then from that, we could deduct our next target condition. And I think the one week time frame is a good time frame here because, because it helps us to be adaptive and kind of navigate at high speed while still establishing or at the same time establishing a high speed of implementation. So here's my recipe for defining direction in crisis. Step one, grasp the crucial facts quickly with your team and do it firsthand. Second, assess risks, needs, and opportunities. So of course we are aware of most of the risks right now. However, a crisis likewise offers opportunities. That is, if we can see them, we can use them. So taking the following perspectives might be helpful for you to identify the relevant risks as well as the opportunities. So with your team, take the following four perspectives. Our people, our customers, our suppliers, and our business model in total. And ask the following three questions. What are the risks? What are the needs and worries right now? And what are the opportunities? And I think focusing on needs and worries of our customers could be quite helpful right now. Because in the past days, I've, I've gotten a lot of emails from all different kind of companies. And, and quite strangely, some of them are not even connecting to the crisis. Others are connecting to crisis, but in a strange way, saying something like, well, please excuse our uh, lack of service during time of uh, COVID-19. And meanwhile, why don't you take a look at our new digitalization products? I don't really feel understood as a customer here. So assess risks, risks needs, and opportunities for people, customer suppliers, and your business. Step three, focus relentlessly. And I really mean it relentlessly. So with your team, ask the following three questions. And I like to use the stop amplify invent model here. What do we need to stop now because it's harmful or not contributing enough to our business or takes too much resources? Be relentless. Don't betray yourself with pets you love. 
Question two, what should we amplify as much as we can as it offers benefit for our business? Don't go for vague options and hope here, but a crisis doesn't kind of overthrow all our business. Look at your existing business. It's not all of a sudden bad. So what do we, what should we amplify? And third, what would offer the greatest benefit if we could invent and deliver it to our customer? So be relentless, stop, amplify, invent, and then define for each of them your challenge within the next six, week, six weeks. Or where do we want to be regarding stop, amplify, invent within the next six weeks? And wouldn't, if we, wouldn't it be great if we could achieve this? So coming back to what we said in the beginning, starting a new behavior starts small. So if I pick one of one point from this recipe, then it would be this. So start a kata, practice this. Focus relentlessly, pick one thing to stop, one thing to amplify, and one thing to even invent within the next four to six weeks. And then we can rerun this process every four to six weeks kind of our navigation process in the crisis. Now let's move on to step two of the improvement kata, which is grasp the current condition. So in grasping the current condition in general, we want to avoid assumptions. And of course, we want to grasp the data, the current condition firsthand, go on site, go and see. And I think, in a chaotic and unpredictable situation like a crisis, what we face right now, that is even more important. It's a bit like a captain knows that a current sea map is very important, but it does not replace being continuously on the lookout on the bridge. So make sure you get current data right now because Measuring and displaying information we have is often inadequate, too slow, outdated. Another thing that is relevant when grasping current condition in a crisis situation is that our brain often focuses on the wrong information. So that's another bias and it's driven by fight or flight, you could say. So that's a bit like, you know, the mouse looking on the, on the snake. And, and this reminds me of a, unfortunate tragic airplane accident of an Air Force flight from Brazil to Paris. And it's believed that the pilots were so taken up with one particular flight instrument, um, by the way, the altitude gauge, uh, that they overlooked the crucial information that could have saved the plane. So due to a technical defect, as the plane was losing more and more altitude, they tried to counteract by pulling up the plane until it stalled. So their brains actually prevented them from seeing the solution to the puzzle, biased by zooming in more and more on the one thing, the altitude they were trying to counteract. So therefore, in a crisis situation, it doesn't make sense to stare at the result. They will, they will not change by doing so. Also, numbers that help in calm waters, like productivity, might be completely misleading right now. Instead, we should measure the progress of our stop and amplify, invent focus activities. So here's my recipe for grasping current condition in crisis. Number one, define the top one, two, or three at max metric or facts or pieces of information you need to monitor to get a good understanding of the crucial and critical information that is relevant for survival. Second, define a progress measurement, we could call it a progress metric for each of your stop, amplify, invent objectives. And then set up a way to measure these progress metric at high frequency every day at best and display them so that every member of your team can get an overview. And right now this could be of course physically on a wall or if we're working, working remotely, this could be on an online dashboard. Just make sure your team has the relevant progress measurement KPIs visible for everybody. Again, if I pick one thing here, a starter kata for grasping current condition, it will be this. Starter kata, practice this. Define one progress metric, 
a metric to measure the progress for each of your stop, amplify, and invent goals. All right, so let's move on to step three, establish short-term target condition. And again, let's keep this simple for a crisis situation. So therefore, just two tips from my side. One, define target conditions with a one-week due date. And that is for each of your six-week stop, amplify, invent goals. One week. Secondly, use a very simple T-template to note your observations and measurements about the current condition, as well as defining the target condition for the week. So you can use an empty sheet of paper or a flip chart. So when we started working with the Proven CADA around 2006, we regularly did like the target condition definition on empty sheets or flip charts. So just going with making making two lines like on the on the flip chart, and and having current condition on the left, target condition on the right, and then our six weeks challenge at the top. Or in other words, on the left side, where are we now? Right side, where do we need to be in one week from now to get closer? to our challenge above here. So you can do that in any meeting, in any one-on-one -on -one encounter, any sure fix, just grab an empty sheet of paper, go left side, right side, where do we wanna be in one week? So if I pick one here again, start a CADA, practice this. For establishing short-term target conditions, define one target condition with a one-week due date for each of your six-week stop amplify invent goals. Of course, we understand that in a crisis, it's also about moving quickly and moving in a concerted way. So only if we align our efforts throughout our teams, the organization, will we achieve what we strive for. And again, the main obstacle that prevents us from doing this is caused by the way our brain works. So we jump to action frantically or we freeze and wait for others to take action and take the risk of the first move. So this reminds me of the time when we had a malfunction in one of the electronic components that was used in about 30% of our products. And uh, all of a sudden we had to synchronize efforts between our supplier in Asia, purchasing and quality assurance in Germany, production and R&D in Germany, and the market which we were delivering to in the US. So teams being spread out over three continents uh, to keep deliveries up. At that time, we started using a, an approach I call the big three by three, and I still use that approach to stay focused uh, for myself. And here's how it works. So at the beginning of each week, I define my big three for the week. So the three most important goals I need to achieve this week in regards to my longer term challenge. Then, in my personal planning routine for the day, I look them up and write down my top three tasks for the day to get closer to my big three of the week. So that makes my set of big three by three. So how would you use that with your team? Well, the individual big three by three of each team member could be linked to the big three for the week or we could say to the next target conditions, the weekly target conditions we have for the stop, amplify, and band challenges, which in return would be linked to the six week challenges we have regarding stop, amplify, invent. So here's my recipe for aligning target conditions in crisis. Step one, ask each team member or sub team to define their big three for the week. Step two, define our, your personal daily big three towards the weekly goals and encourage each team member to do that as well. And by the way, if you have a personal planning routine, you might kind of want to put that into that right now. If you don't, don't have a personal planning routine for the day right now, it's maybe a good time to start it. And third, establish a daily all hands in the morning to synchronize everybody. More on that in the next section. So again, if I pick one first step, one first move you can put into practice immediately, it would be this, start a kata, Practice this. Define your personal daily big three towards the weekly goals and encourage each of your team members to do that as well. So let's come to step four for navigating crisis, go quickly 
by experiment. We understand that adaptiveness is based on going quickly and going by experiments. So taking small steps, getting immediate feedback and learning and adapting accordingly, and all that at high speed is what we need. However, that is easy to say, but very hard to do. And kind of reminds me of the time a factory burned down at one of our main suppliers. And unfortunately, this supplier was producing parts for nearly every, it was housing parts, nearly every one of our products. So I was the plant manager and within about 42 hours, our production lines one by one shut down. So we jumped into crisis mode and had a daily all hands crisis team jumping into action. Very soon I discovered two problems that might sound familiar to you. So on our morning status meeting, we usually took a very long time and it, it got through my mind, well, we need time to work on the problems, not just for discussing them. And secondly, people were waiting, at least that's what it seemed, for a morning meeting for decisions to be taken rather than deciding themselves during the day. Ouch, that really hurt. So here's what we learned uh, through that situation. Our all hands meeting were taking so long because we were discussing problems in detail and trying to problem solve in the meeting. So all hands meeting, we learned, should be focused on aligning the team regarding what we need to do next, kind of daily, big three, as well as establishing a common understanding of the current situation, which of course might change every day or even on an hourly basis. A second thing we, or for especially me personally learned that micromanaging in a crisis situation is a major management trap because it takes away the initiative from people and dramatically slows down the problem solving process. Does that sound familiar? So here's my recipe for going quickly by experiment. And, and this section kind of pulls together what we've said so far. Point one, have a very short daily all hands, best in the morning to align the team, repeat the target conditions for the week, set the targets for the day, and identify who needs help. Point two, refrain from problem solving or detailed discussion in the all hands. That doesn't solve problems, it just costs time. Instead, establish short, frequent interactions, one-on-one -on -one or in small groups for problem solving. And four, use the five questions, we'll talk about them in a minute, use the five questions to structure your daily all hands meeting and encounters. Again, if I pick one thing to start with, it will be this. Start a CADA, practice this. Use the five question structure to structure your daily all hands as well as all the other encounters you have over the day. So what are the five questions? Well, the five questions we know as the coaching CADA. And the coaching CADA is a pattern for managers and coaches to help and foster a scientific step-by-step -step approach with individual teams. So here they are. Question one, what is your target condition? So your big three, or in our team meeting, what's the big three for the week? Question two, what is the actual condition now? And what did we learn from taking, what did you learn from taking your last step? Or for the team meeting, what is the actual condition now for us as a team regarding the big three, where are we? And what did we learn since yesterday? Question three, what obstacles are preventing you from reaching the target condition? Which one are you addressing now? Again, in a team meeting, you would rephrase that a bit. So which obstacle are we addressing now for each of our topics, uh, weekly target conditions, or in each sub-team? And then what is there for our next step? What do we expect until tomorrow? And when can we go and see what we've learned from taking the step? Of course, question five is more for a one-on-one -on -one encounter. When can we go and see what we have learned? Uh, if we have the daily all hands, it's clear we will meet tomorrow. But just on a side note here, in the all, daily all hands in the morning, identify who needs help and also who needs to work with whom and make sure we have clear appointments for the day who will meet with whom to work on what over the day. So in closing, let's kind of summarize what we've discussed in this webinar for navigating in crisis. So we started out with the improvement CADA, your four steps for navigating in crisis, direction, current condition, target condition, 
go quickly by experiment. And I just would like to summarize the five starter kata I highly encourage you to put into action and practice right now. Starter kata one, focus relentlessly. What do we need to stop, amplify, or invent in the next six weeks? Go one, one, one here. So um, pick one for each might be enough for the next six weeks. Start a kata two, measure and visualize the progress towards the stop amplify invent objectives. Start a kata three, define the weekly target conditions, so the weekly team big three, towards the stop amplify invent objectives. And as a second start a kata for target condition, define your big three, your daily big three, and encourage each team member to do the same. And last but not least, Start a kata number five, use the five questions for your all hands meeting as well as for your other encounters. So in closing, I would like to add a personal note here. And it's kind of a pre-step to the improvement kata. And I find this helpful, especially in a crisis situation. So just a question do you sometimes have the situation that your thoughts start racing that it's hard to focus with so much information and pressure so i believe being calm in our mind and being able to focus our thoughts is a precondition for making good decisions for helpful coaching and instilling confidence in our people into the people around us so it's kind of the pre-step for the improvement kata, and I call this calm your mind. And it reminds me of a situation I had around 2007, 2008, when I was a plant manager. And for the first time in company history, we had to lay off a sub substantial number of people. We didn't know how long this would stay bad, if there would be another wave of layoffs necessary. So emotions were high, and I remember my mind was spinning in circles. And very often you would kind of get this question are we on the right track are we doing the right thing emotions high so here are two steps that i personally find helpful to calm my mind in a crisis step one go in for the long run so don't let yourself be carried away by wishful thinking also don't be paralyzed by fear so what i what helps me here is thinking of admiral stockdale and and the paradox that was mentioned or found by Jim Collins when he interviewed him for his book, Good to Great. So Stockdale was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for over seven years. Um, by the way, two years in, in iron foot clamps. So social distancing and staying at home for four weeks, probably not too bad. And, and when he was interviewed by Jim Collins, Collins asked him a very interesting question. So who didn't survive? And Stockdale's answer was even more interesting. He said, the optimists. So what did he mean? Well, he meant those that set their kind of goals on hope. They hope we'll be free on a specific date. We'll be free by spring. We'll be free by summer. We'll be free by Halloween or by Thanksgiving. And, and were repeatedly disappointed by their hopes not being fulfilled, were devastated in the end. So what I see here is that the COVID-19 crisis is a twofold crisis, health-wise and economically. And nobody knows, because the latter one is probably going to be the longer one, nobody knows how long this is gonna last. So don't build your strategy on hope that it will be over soon. We don't know. Instead, kind of retain faith that we will prevail in the end, and at the same time, confront reality. And, and go in for the long run. If it's shorter, we're all happy. If it takes longer, we're in for the long run and we'll prevail. Second step for calming your mind, write down your rationale for difficult decisions. So when making a difficult decision with your team, and then in implementation, what I've realized is often that doubts creep in. Are we doing the right thing? Is this correct? What happens if it's the wrong decision? So. What I'm saying here is, when you discuss the decision and make the decision, write down your rationale. So once doubts come up, once emotions come up, read your rationale. And that will either help you to calm your mind, say, yes, we're on the track, this is why we decided it, let's implement it, or will help you to see that the situation has changed and, and we have to change the, the decision as well. So let me finish with this. 
I believe if we practice improvement kata right now, it will benefit us twofold. We can master the crisis and we develop a new way of thinking and acting that is needed for tomorrow anyways. So stay calm, do the kata, we're in this together. Thanks a lot. Thank you.